This is Twit. Well, it turns out that most of the smart home tech that we install is wireless. <laughs> um, you know, it used to be that there had to be wires kind of run between everything and you'd have cameras installed here and motion sensors there and things that opened up, you know, fences outside and garage doors and temperature sensors and speakers, etc. And these were generally packages that were installed by home builders before anyone moved in. Um, and now that HomeKit and SmartThings and all these different sorts of technologies have come along uh, to, to make it available, I think, to more consumers, we're having to take a different approach. And, you know, it's not as easy for every person to go in and try install a, try to install a bunch of stuff that requires wires running between it. But as I mentioned, most of the stuff just it doesn't require wires. You get you have your Wi-Fi enabled bulbs. You have switches that you you know can plug into the wall. You've got, fa I mean the, the the list goes on and on and on. There's lots of technology. There's motion sensing and temperature sensors and all these things. And I have one right here that's a temperature and humidity sensor from Elgato, and it's the Eve degree. And I mean it no wires. So it ended up being really easy to write that piece. It's it's not hard to to have a wireless uh, installation. Now, do you have uh, the do you have the whole Eve system at your house? Yeah, yeah, I've got motion sensors and uh, temperature sensors from them, as well as contact sensors and um, a few Eve switches uh, that actually did require some wiring because they're installed in wall. And then, is there an Eve hub, or does it connect to a different hub? No, it actually uses Bluetooth LE, um, and it's a, it's HomeKit enabled, so it uses your Apple TV if you have a fourth generation or later Apple TV, um, or your iPad. If you have an iPad at home, then that also works as the hub. Now, that's if you're out of the house. If you're out of the house and you want to, say, shut off the light that's connected to that Eve light switch, then what happens is your phone communicates with the iPad or the Apple TV, and that sends the Bluetooth signal directly to the switch and tells it to turn off. Uh, if you're in home, though, then the phone can just do it itself. It can talk directly to the, the hub if it needs to, or rather to the switch if it needs to. Because that was, I mean, about a year ago when I, you know, set, I set an intention, I'm going to smarten up my home. It was all the hubs that really mm -hmm. threw me. Like there were so many of them and I just, that, and I just gave up. But are you saying like that they, they're not going that direction, these companies anymore, or you can just do it now that they, you have HomeKit, if you're using, um, if you're on iOS, then you don't need the hubs? Um, so it's interesting because, yes, Philips Hue, I still say, is the best lighting system that you can buy into. And Philips Hue does require a hub. Um, but, yeah, I think we're seeing a trend right now where hubs are less important because Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are getting better at sipping very small amounts of power and also reaching longer distances. So I have all the way in my garage, which is all the way across the house, um, a contact sensor on my garage door and you know from anywhere in the house and even like as i'm leaving i still get notifications letting me know that the garage door has been opened or closed because the technology is just good and i haven't since i bought it i haven't had to replace the battery so i really think we're going to see companies moving toward the bluetooth and the wi-fi uh area because of the fact that people as you just mentioned people really don't like to to fool with hubs and sometimes people don't know what they're supposed to do with hubs or bridges um and you know, bridges are good in the sense that it's an easy way to kind of organize your your lights. So in the case of Philips Hue, and as I think we we move on and we see these devices are our smart assistant devices like the Google Home and the Amazon Echo being able to communicate directly with these Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled devices. That's where we can kind of start to forget about the bridge or the hub because those devices themselves become the bridges and the hubs. We should also say, like your your mileage of how how easy it is to set up a lot of these systems will depend on how old or new your house is, right? I mean, oh, with, yeah. mm -hmm. with the Echo B4 that um, I began installing, uh, I got about halfway through and I realized I didn't have like the tiny flathead screwdriver, um, which is the most, most people have. Uh, Burke, who's in our studio, is laughing at me right now because he has, he probably carries five or six around <laughs> in his pockets at all times. But I, uh, what you know, they have the Echo B has a an extra kit that you can mm -hmm. um, that comes along with it if you have a more complicated system. But if your house is newer, you don't really need that. The power extension kit, yes. I think, is what it's called. And yeah, I I had to ins I had to use it with that. And 
certainly, you know, your mileage will vary. And if you're going to dig into that stuff, if you're not comfortable with it, please, please, please don't, 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 don't do it. Um, let so hire somebody, let somebody else come in who might know a little bit more, because if you do start getting into the wiring, like with me, you know, replacing in wall switches and things like that, if you don't know how to do that stuff, you could seriously injure yourself, if not legitimately kill yourself. Uh, it's, it's dangerous. It's high power. It's not safe if you aren't comfortable doing it or if you don't know how. Um, at the same time, you know, these companies do include all the hardware and things like that that you need other than, you know, screwdrivers and stuff like that. Um, they, they include wire nuts if you're going to do, you know, the, the outlets and the switches. And they include a lot of instructions and will give you everything that you need if you have a little bit of experience in that. But if not, or if, if you have an older home, a lot of these in-wall switches aren't going to work because they require something called the neutral wire. And many old wiring systems do not include neutral wires. And you'll actually have to hire an electrician to come and rewire your entire home to add a neutral wire to each of the, the boxes that you want to add you know, devices to. So would you call, having installed the Echo before, would you call that a wireless device? Or would you uh, say you have to really go in there? I mean, you, there's some the inside your thermostat that you have to connect. Yeah. So when, when I was creating this article, what I really was going for was... Um, basically staying out of your walls, staying out of, of, you know, digging into spidery crawl spaces and stuff like that. And so I do consider that device, that um, smart thermostat to be a wired experience. And yeah, again, the instructions are included and it wasn't difficult even when I had to install that power extender kit to make it happen. But sometimes people don't have all of the wires that they need running from their thermostat um, to their whole air conditioning slash heat system. And so you end up having to call an electrician for that. And it can get complicated really quickly. Uh, so this was all about building out a smart home without having to dig into anything. So, you know, you could, in theory, give these tools to, you could buy this kit of products and give it to anyone and they'd be able to set up automations and not have to worry about digging into walls or, or calling an electrician to do it. I'm glad I talked to you because last or earlier this week when Amazon announced that they were going to uh, hire a bunch of smart home experts and um, offer installation uh, at a cost, I said, you know, if you're going to be putting these devices in your house, you should know how to do it and do it yourself, which um, you have a much better point that if you really don't feel comfortable um, and you might die, then maybe it's not the best learn teachable moment. Um, but I think that I'm still going to go forward and do the uh, and finish the Echo B4 process. Um, Cause yeah, I mean, you do have to, you have to like turn off your air conditioning and your mm -hmm. heat. Um, and sometimes that is in a spidery crawl space, but I think I can do it. Yeah, I think you can too, Megan. And honestly, that one is one of the easier ones because those wires are very, very, very low power that are running from your thermostat system all the way through to wherever you have it set up. Um, that's a lot different than taking, you know, the light switch off of your wall and working with that because you got to go to the breaker box. You got to make sure you turn off the right breaker. You know, some of the power in your house is going to go out while that breaker is out. Uh, if you live where I live, then the electrician did some funny, weird stuff where things are labeled incorrectly. And so you have to be careful of that. I mean, there are lots of uh, different things that can happen. And that's where you really want to know what you're doing before you dig into it. But um, if you are interested, uh, there also happens to be an article that I wrote about installing these in-wall switches. So um, certainly check that out if you're looking to you know, upgrade your existing thing. But if you'd rather just stay wire-free, then... Uh, Wire free is the way to be. Yeah, and check out that article. You can read read both of those articles on iMore. And you also wrote about how you can do you can smarten up your home a little bit on a budget. What could I get for a hundred dollars? Sadly, not much. <laughs> <laughs> so I I actually this one was pitched to me, and I you know was like, oh yeah, this is going to be great. It's going to be easy. I'm going to go in. I'm going to have like five things. Uh, -uh. Um, I ended up kind of putting together, I think it was three different sort of kits, three different packs, smart home packs that you could buy. And I had to make some, uh, a few compromises because what I was hoping to do was stick to home kit enabled devices. And the reason why it's not because it's on iMore because iMore actually has expanded their coverage beyond just Apple stuff. But if you get home kit enabled devices, 
all nine times out of 10, anything that's HomeKit enabled is also going to work with the Echo. And eight times out of 10 is also going to work with the Google Assistant. So that means even though it's a smaller subset, you're buying into something that's going to work across no matter what devices you have in your home to control. So your voice is going to work if you're talking to Google, if you're talking to A-L-E-X-A, or if you're talking to Siri. And that's what makes, I think, HomeKit-enabled devices great on the you know, on the surface, but then also HomeKit enabled devices. If you do have iOS, it's super integrated. And also because of technology or technologies, because of Apple's more rigorous uh, safety concerns and security concerns, they are more secure products. So anywho, um, I did have to make a compromise and I, I included a few that were not HomeKit enabled, but do have great ratings and uh, work well as Wi-Fi devices. So I think one is like a Wi-Fi bulb and you get a motion sensor and a plug. And so, you know, you can build out a basic experience where when, you know, you walk in the house, it senses your motion and then the light in the entryway turns on. Or you can have it set up to where it'll just notify you if it senses motion. So you could have that, you know, in your front yard or something like that. And it works after 6 p.m. and lets you know if there are you know, people creeping around outside your house. And if maybe you just want a plug that is connected to a fan and you get a temperature sensor and it's like, okay, it's 75 degrees in here. Now I'd like for this fan to come on because it needs to cool down. So basically for under a hundred dollars, you can build out a basic automation experience that involve a few different things. And this is also why I suggested HomeKit enabled accessories for the most part, because on top of these devices kind of working together to be controlled, if it's HomeKit enabled, it can also use your phone's location in and of itself as a trigger. So when I leave my home, then I want that light that I bought to turn off. It can do that. When I enter my home, I want that light that I bought to turn on, or I want the fan to turn on or what have you. So there are some fun experiences that you can create using these different packs that I've kind of built out. But yeah, I mean, ultimately, smart home technology is still new. And well, it's it's just gaining popularity, I think, on its own as these individual products that, that uh, consumers can buy. And because of that, I don't encourage people to, you know, go to Amazon and find the $5. Oh, Lord, if there's something that's $5, please, for the love, don't buy that. Um, because this stuff needs to be safe and secure. And that almost always means that the company is going to have to spend more money to create it, which means it's going to cost you more money to buy it. Right. And you want them to invest in, yeah, in uh, updates and like privacy and all, all the other thing. Yeah. So exactly. Exactly.